right, everyone. Welcome back to Cody's Lab. So as you can see, I've acquired some bones. These are some chicken bones, which were in the garden. I throw them in the compost because uh, bone is a good source of slow-release phosphorus. You know, they say not to throw uh, meat in the compost, but I figure as long as you take the meat off the bones first and you only add very small amounts, then it's fine. But uh, today I'm going after the calcium the calcium in the bones. Uh, see, these are mostly calcium phosphate. And I've always wanted to try extracting it and actually getting some metallic calcium from the bone. <laughs> so, let's do it. Okay, so the first step is to remove the organic materials. You see, these bones are not really all that old. They're less than a year. So, the meat has been removed, but they still have a lot of organics, such as collagen, in the actual bone. You can see they haven't really started to break down yet. So to remove that, I'm going to heat them up to around 1,000 degrees Celsius, just so that oxygen can burn away all the organics. Okay, it's the next day. Uh, the furnace actually quit. Yeah, that'll do it. There's the problem. But it did get pretty hot. We did burn the bones mostly. You can see there's still a little bit of carbon left on them. But at this point it's going to be in the form of a char. So it really shouldn't cause too much trouble. You can see the bones are considerably more fragile now. They've lost the binding properties of the collagen. So essentially, we have bone ash. We grind it up, of course. And that is uh, essentially calcium phosphate with some minor impurities. So let's just uh, take this and continue processing. So I've placed the charred bones in a flask, as you can see, and I'm going to add some hydrochloric acid to dissolve the calcium phosphate. I'll just let that dissolve. So it's been a few hours. You can see there's still some pieces of bone left but it is mostly dissolved, and that is perfect. Now I'm gonna filter the solution using my little uh, vacuum filter setup. Let me just uh, pour some over. Okay, and begin sucking it through. A little bit yellowish. That's all right. Okie dokes. See, there's some bits of bone, some charcoal, and what looks like some mud that has fired into ceramic there. <laughs> bone juice! All of the minerals that a growing body could ever need. A thousand times the calcium of milk and none of the fat. Uh, still a little acidic. Uh, might eat through your teeth. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend drinking. So this bone juice here contains lots of calcium ions, but it also contains lots of phosphate, chloride ions, as well as various contaminants. Now I'd like to separate out the calcium, so I'm going to react it to form calcium oxalate. Calcium oxalate is only very slightly soluble. I have some oxalic acid here, about 126 grams worth. Now adding this to the solution wouldn't do much because it would also lower the pH significantly and make the calcium oxalate soluble again. So I will react the oxalate with some sodium hydroxide first to neutralize the pH. So this will be sodium oxalate. But sodium oxalate is it's not super soluble either. And so in order to dissolve it, I'm gonna to need to add it to about three liters of water. So here's the sodium hydroxide going into the water. This will make a lye water solution. 
And now I'm going to add the oxalic acid. Might be a good idea to add it slowly. This is releasing quite a bit of heat. I am doing this with a plastic shield in front of my face. There we go. Now we've got our sodium oxalate solution. I have a glass cylinder to use as a settling column. I'm going to add the bone juice in. Just like so. And now I'm going to slowly add the sodium oxalate solution. Let's actually film this from down there so you can actually see what's going on. Sodium oxalate. Okay, pH is too low. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, sodium hydroxide to bring up the pH until something precipitates. See, it is making some goopy stuff. Let's give it a stir. Goopy stuff goes away. Okay, so it still needs more. We're close. pH, but not quite. Okay, that looks about right. I'm going to add in the sodium oxalate now. That's more like it. Nice milky precipitate forming. Okay, just give it a bit of a stir. Then I'll let it settle out. Okay, so it's mostly settled out. As you can see, we now have a clear solution. This solution is going to contain mostly sodium phosphate and sodium chloride, but also some excess sodium oxalate. But there's also going to be some of the other contaminants like the uh, uh, potassium and magnesium oxalate. Fortunately, those are more soluble than the calcium oxalate, so those are mostly going to be in the liquid phase. There's probably still a little bit of magnesium that has dropped out. So I think what I'm going to do is siphon off the water, put it in a bucket, mix it with lime, and then probably just dump it in the garden. It is a fertilizer after all. And then uh, add some more pure water to help dissolve out that uh, magnesium, and then we'll let it settle out again. So I've got a tube here. It's filled with water. I should just be able to siphon with it. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, I've got some water. It's just pure water. Pour this in. We'll stir it up again. And that should dissolve the last of the magnesium. So the white precipitate that is left should be pretty much just calcium oxalate. There we go. Oh, got my stir. Yeah, looks kind of cool. So it settled out once again. Yeah. Uh, suck out the water. Okay, here we are. Water's been run through the calcium oxalate. Set that over there. And I'm going to take this material out and put it in a little stainless steel dish. Uh, might be easier said than done. Come on, come on. There we go. There 
we are. I'll uh, okay. I need to peel this paper off of that. And now I have the same material that kidney stones are made out of. <laughs> Now I'm going to put the stained stainless steel dish with the oxalate back into the furnace to thermally decompose it. It will decompose to calcium carbonate and carbon monoxide at about 300 degrees Celsius and at about 800 will release carbon dioxide forming calcium oxide. Now this is going to release carbon monoxide which is poisonous so I am doing this outside and a little fan here to just kind of blow it away. Well, that should be hot enough to have decomposed the oxalate. Let's open this. Have a look in there. Okay, it's a little bit black. There's probably some organics that managed to get through. Busted into pieces here so that it'll heat up a little bit faster. So there it is. It's heated up and cooled back down. Should have uh, calcium oxide now. Uh, the stainless steel. Not a very high grade stainless, so it's flaked and oxidized, but it's not too big of a deal. I have a way to get rid of it. Magnets. See? I'll just pull it right out. So it is still a little bit colorful. There's obviously some contamination. But I have removed most of the little flecks of oxidized iron using the magnet. Now let's take a piece, let's drop some water on it. If it is calcium oxide, then the water should react to form calcium hydroxide and in the process releasing some heat. See the steam coming off? Heat it up. And after a couple of minutes, it's expanded and sucked up all the water. I now have slaked lime. Calcium hydroxide. Okay, store it in a jar so that it doesn't absorb moisture from the air. There's my bone lime. <laughs> However, this is not my final product. This is calcium and oxygen, and I want calcium alone in its elemental form. And to do that, I need to reduce it. I need to add electrons. Right now, the calcium atoms are in the plus two oxidation state, which means they are giving away two electrons to the oxygen. So I need to force that back so that the calcium is in the zero oxidation state. Now there's a few ways I could do that. Uh, most straightforward way would probably be to react this with some hydrochloric acid, make calcium chloride, and then uh, react that with uh, a metal with a higher reduction potential like lithium. Uh, that's what I did for my uh, extracting potassium from bananas video. But a lot of people didn't like that. They, they didn't like that I added another alkali metal. So, I need to use electricity. Just electrons in their pure state. But uh, electrolysis of the salt also doesn't work. I've tried it several times. Uh, there, for some reason, it just doesn't turn out. So I need to use a liquid metal cathode. 
The calcium ions will be able to move from the solution into the liquid metal, where they will be reduced by the excess electrons and protected from being reoxidized. For this, I'll need to use a metal that can dissolve calcium, and I'll use mercury for that. And that's actually the same method that uh, Humphrey Davy used when he first isolated calcium back in 1808. Uh, he used a paste made of uh, uh, mercury oxide and calcium hydroxide, and then electrolyzed it with about 5 volts. Uh, I'm just going to use a solution of calcium hydroxide and liquid mercury. Okay, here's the mercury that we'll be using as the cathode. I've got a stainless steel wire inside of a glass tube, which I'm going to place down all the way to the bottom of the flask. Now I'm going to suck up some mercury, add it to the flask, just enough to cover that tube. should be fine. Oh. Forgot how hard mercury is to suck up. Okay, just enough to cover that wire, Rest back. now the calcium oxide, let's just throw a few pieces of that down in there, I don't want to add all of it, but just a little bit, there we go, now for some water. And the anode. This is the positively charged electrode, which is just a piece of platinum ribbon. Uh, stainless steel could probably work for this, but platinum will definitely work. And I'm going to need some more water. Actually, let's just lengthen the ribbon a little bit. Don't want it touching the mercury, but definitely want it in the liquid. There we go. Yeah, if you look in from the side, you can see platinum ribbon, there's a space, some electrolyte, and then the mercury. Okay, so here's the electricity. So here's the electric wire. You can see I've got the positive there. It's running through a variable resistor into the anode. And then here's our cathode. And if I touch this, the mercury should jump back, kind of like dropping soap in water if this is working. Perfect. If we look in there, you can see bubbles of oxygen forming on the platinum. Calcium ions are being absorbed by the mercury. Uh, the mercury is also releasing a little bit of hydrogen. So we've got some side reactions going. Yeah, this appears to be working. It'll probably speed up as more of the lime dissolves. I just added some water to this dish. That's to provide more surface area for heat to escape. Also allow heat to come off by evaporating the water. Just to keep this uh, reaction cool. Seems to be going all right. Uh, more of the lime has reacted. It's uh, made the solution very milky and hard to see through, but I can still see bubbles coming up. So it's run overnight. It's been electrolyzing for about 10 hours. I'm just going to pull some of this water out of here now. It's still cold. That's good. Uh, let's see. Just pull that one off. Let's pull our platinum electrode out. It is not damaged. That's good. Can use it again. the steel electrode. Okay, here's our electrolyte with the lime and the mercury. I'm going to tip it off into this beaker so we can have a better look at it. And here's the mercury. Okay. 
me just uh, clean this up a little bit. So we definitely have a little bit of calcium. You can see the calcium mercury amalgam is a little bit less dense than mercury and its solubility is not that high. So it's kind of separating out a little bit. You can see it floating on top of the mercury here. It's producing hydrogen as it reacts with the water. Let me move some of the pieces around, you can see it. <laughs> That's pretty good. So we definitely have calcium here. That's not a lot. I definitely think that's enough for a proof of concept, yeah. Before it all reacts, I'm going to pull the water off. And then I'm going to put the mercury in a bottle. A little bit of paper to soak up the last of the water. Mercury doesn't absorb into things very easily. So I can get away with this. Got some drops of mercury, which I'll have to collect off of it. So I'll throw that in my waste bin. One more piece of paper. Okay. And now you can see the calcium Mercury amalgam is reacting with the air, forming a calcium nitride. So let's get this uh, in a sealed bottle as quickly as possible. Maybe two bottles. Might even want to put some oil over top of it. There we go. See how it sticks to the glass? Mercury doesn't normally do that when it's pure. It's definitely got some other metal in there. Okay, so there's a bit of the mercury calcium amalgam that I spilled into the tub. As you can see, it's reacting with water, producing bubbles of hydrogen gas. This is pretty cool, but I want just calcium. I don't want it mixed with mercury. So to get the mercury out, I'm just gonna boil it off and distill it. I've built a little apparatus here, which is just a piece of pipe, two ends welded on. There's a crucible inside, which I'll put the mercury in. Uh, down lower, you've got a condensing pipe and a receiving flask. And a vacuum pump to pull out the air divider so I can put in argon. That's to protect it. Anyway, got a little funnel here which I can stick in the inside of the inner crucible. Take my mercury calcium amalgam. And drain it in. I'll just put a patch on over the hole, like that. And now, let me flush the system with argon. <laughs> okay, I need to be careful not to heat it too much and boil the mercury before I want it to be boiling. But the way I've got it set up, it should be relatively easy. Okay. Oh, 
had to check the seal. That's as good as I could ask. Ready to rock. Okay, the mercury started to come over. hear the mercury boiling. Looks like the mercury has stopped coming over. That appears to be all of it. So now it's just gonna heat up, melt the calcium. Hey, that's probably warm enough. Just let it cool now. So it's cooled down. I'm gonna leave it right where it is so that it can stay hooked up to the argon. I'm just gonna run this uh, pipe cutter on it. Let's see if we can cut it open. Okay, we're through. Turn up the argon. Let's see what we got. something quite shiny. There's something. You know, this is calcium. It's just spongy. It didn't coalesce into a bead. Okay, let's see what happens if I drop some of this into the water. Oh, it's bubbling. It burns. <laughs> That's hydrogen. And look, the solution's cloudy. It's forming lime water, calcium hydroxide. It's a little bit gray. So there's some contamination, maybe some graphite, maybe, maybe some mercury. I would call that a success. <laughs> All right. Here's a piece of metal that I produced from the chloride by reducing it with lithium. Let's see what happens if I light it on fire. Okay, it turned black. Uh, a little bit of chloride salts protecting it. There we go. <laughs> Oh, look at that bright white flame. What happens when you light calcium metal on fire? It's uh, fairly similar to magnesium. So here's the calcium metal that I recovered from bones. The smaller vial contains the calcium that I produced by reducing it with some lithium. As you can see, it's still got a little bit of glass from the test tube still stuck to it. And the lithium chloride. And the larger vial contains the calcium we extracted from the mercury, which didn't collect into a single bead, probably because I didn't have any flux or anything in there to help it flow. And so it's a more spongy gray form. Calcium is actually pretty stable in air because it forms a protective calcium nitride coating as long as it stays very dry. Uh, the vials are filled with argon right now, so it should keep pretty well. So there you have it, calcium from bones. <laughs> At least a little bit.
So interestingly, another great YouTuber, Explosions and Fire, was also independently working on this same project at the same time. We found out about this a few days ago, and we, we talked about it on Twitter a little bit, and we've decided to go ahead with publishing the videos as planned. If you guys are interested in this, be sure to go and give him some love. Uh, post a link to his video down in the description. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.